So we just got done with the offseason, and it was a very active free agency and draft. So maybe take a look at that video before watching this one if you haven't already, because obviously there will be some spoilers as we show the roster going into these three preseason games. Very important games, as obviously we have a bunch of different players like quarterbacks on the roster fighting for a job. I think we have five quarterbacks right now, and I genuinely don't know who's going to be the starter. We have two rookies. Not the best rookies, but rookies. We have, of course, Hendon Hooker. We have T Tyson Bagent. We have a couple of other guys on the roster. We have a couple of wide receivers and a couple of different offensive linemen and some linebackers, some corners that could fight for battles, yeah, safeties. There's a lot of positions on this team that could fight for a starting job. And obviously, we're going to go into this uh, adjust lineup real quick before heading into that first game against the Oilers. Uh, and this is what the projected lineup looks like. If if all was said and done and this was week one, this is exactly how I would see it being played out. Of course, I didn't really look at Randall Cobb's regressions, though, so I'm not actually sure how bad he is. He ended up losing 29 points, which is 4 to medium, 5 to deep route, 4 to injury, 1 to spec, 3 to short route, 2 to break tackle, 5 to change of direction, 1 to juke, 1 to catch in traffic, 1 to short, 1 to spin, 1 to deep, of course, does have the mentor tag, which is great. Uh, but, yeah, is he really the starter anymore? I don't know. But as of right now, he's going to be fighting for that job. Because why not? Who doesn't want a little bit of extra money? Uh, but this is what the offensive line looks like. I don't suspect too much changing here either. But we do have Falele, and we do have Barber, especially Barber, because he is a star dev. Then defensively, linebacker, for the most part, seems to be in order. But Walt James, who had a very impressive training camp, is actually on the heels with some athleticism of his own, great hit power, and of course, youth with that ceiling because of it. Safeties didn't really get too much competition there, I'm going to be honest with you. But Hicks, Monday, Griffin, there's a good chance that, you know, Smoke Monday gives a, a good fight for one of these safety spots. Connor Wilson, as of right now, projects to be the starter, as he looks like a promising free agent pickup uh, that was just like UDFA. There's some injury concerns there, but... For the most part, I think we like what we got going there. And then cornerbacks, there's a lot of decent cornerbacks. I don't think it really matters who's literally the starter, but we're obviously going to be uh, taking a look at potential change-ups in the lineup. Damari Mathis, the new free agent pickup, is obviously a guy that's going to be playing number two for now, but even with all that athleticism, there could easily be an upstart like Nick Jones or Mr. Hayes, who both... Had DevOps to star Dev at the end of the season last year. Nick Jones more than anyone as he is insanely young still and uh, is like three years younger than Mathis. Maybe even four years younger than Mathis. Then we also have this uh, Lavelle Forbes fella who has 72 man, 67 zone. There is, once again, a lot of up-and-comers on this team that can steal roster spots. We also did sign Carl Brooks from free agency who's, I mean, kind of young. And then Doug Costin who's a little bit more raw but obviously had a really good year for us last year, so you just never know who's going to start. There's some positions that seem almost guaranteed, while others are completely up in the air. Which, speaking of up in the air, at this point, I have no idea if the 500 likes were hit from the offseason video, so this might actually be a Monday upload. But regardless, if we get this video to 250 likes, we will have week one tomorrow. And that's really all there is to it. Let's take a look at the Houston Oilers. Obviously, injuries aren't too much of an issue. It's training camp injuries could exist. That is the wrong thing. They could exist. They surely could. But for the most part, I think they're going to be healthy. So let's take a look at what this team looks like. And it features Justin Fields as the starting quarterback. Obviously, uh, insanely fast. Decent throw power. Pretty good accuracy. He's David Montgomery, the starting running back. Wide receiver Cliff Florence, the really high overall rookie wide receiver that they drafted was it pick three? It was very high up there. Nico Collins at the number three with Deontay Johnson at two. Think of Nico Collins as number two and then Deontay at three. That'd be a pretty damn good lineup. Everett could use a better tight end, but they do have Mobley, who uh, is actually pretty athletic. So could be the future starter, like it says. Broderick Jones is a solid left tackle. Wynn is a pretty good left guard. Pochick is fine center. Cap is a fine right guard. And then Darnell Wright is a pretty good up-and-coming tackle. Nick Bosa, one of the best pass rushers in the league. Christian Wilkins, maybe the wrong scheme, but a very good block shedder nonetheless. Dexter Lawrence is a very good player at getting to the quarterback and stopping the run. Diaby, this looks like a 3-4 as he is 
Well, a 3-4 outside linebacker. Leighton Van Der Esch and Al Shair are going to be the middle linebackers with Davenport at the right outside linebacker spot. Cornerback, super speedy, tall, woolen. Martin Emerson, the number two cornerback with a lot of potential there. 90 zone coverage. Jalen Thompson, the free safety with uh, a pretty decent overall and okay zone coverage. And then Kirby Joseph with some pretty good zone coverage as well. And it's a primetime game against these Oilers as we are going to be testing out the new wave of players. There are a lot of new players that could be occupying roster spots this year. I mean, like a good 20%, perhaps. It is a high number of players as obviously we're a really young team with a lot of potential, but not a whole lot of proven talent. So there's really no one that's job is safe. It's a few players, but for the most part, it's... It's a competitive squad, and maybe that's what makes this team as good as it is. I know it's a 5 or 12 roster, but when you look at the actual talent we have on this team, we had no business even winning one game, let alone five. So that competition, it does breed. And hopefully we can uh, create ourselves a championship roster. Maybe we actually have the franchise quarterback on the roster as we speak. Maybe Hendon Hooker is the guy. Just needed to stay healthy and... You know, his first year under the belt with this team was a little bit of a shaky one, but maybe, just maybe, things are going to be the full-on experience with him. But we'll have to see. Maybe he doesn't even play more than this preseason game. Maybe uh, we move on right away, but we will not know for sure right away as we will have to kick the ball off first. We're on eight-minute quarters as we're going to be seeing the majority of these four quarters in all three games. So don't want this to be too long, but at the same time, we do need to see these players. The yappage is over. The playing shall commence. A lot of similar names that we've seen in the past, but at the same time, some new ones like we talked about, especially on that D-line. We force him back left, kind of. Cam Jones, definitely not a new name, as he got himself from the normal to superstar dev in one season. Obviously, on the other side, there's a guy that did equally as well, if not better, in Zach Kuntz, the starting tight end. And we're going to be stepping on uh, Cam Jones, trying to get out there, and a really good job by Ryan Moss to see it. Turn around and just get a hand up there. Looked like he was doing the vertical test jump. Vertical jump test, anyways, at the combine there himself. But regardless, third and nine for the 26. I'm also excited to see some of our... Oh, what a move! No! What a dive! Knocked out perfectly played by Forbes. But wow, Jackson smoked the right tackle. We got a little excited, though, and thankfully Fields, instead of running... Decided to test the throw. I got to imagine in a regular game, that's just not going to be a play he makes. So we'll take a, you know, we'll be happy with it. We'll just, we'll just be happy with the punt when he could have ran for so many yards. We absolutely sold by not containing. And then here goes Mathis on the return. Nice little return there for a few yards. Might be the new uh, punt returner, whether he starts at corner or not. As we're really just lacking speed to the spot. And he's one of the fastest players on the team already. And then Hooker, we talked about it. Could be the guy. You never know, but obviously there's some real low ratings. Specifically that awareness at 42. We will see a lot of throwing, but at the same time, I don't want to just exclusively throw the ball when they're giving us a run lane as Beatty will gain about 8. And I was going to say Beatty gains 80. Didn't say it, but now you know I was thinking it, which is I mean, not quite as bad as actually saying it, but still, and kind of got bumped by his own guy and that. That was a lot of contact. I think I'm willing to accept this penalty. I mean, if we're keeping it real, you could have, like, not mauled us. That would have been kind of cool. And that was a force. And there looks like there's going to be a holding penalty here, which hopefully is not one of the rookies because we definitely, I think, our left tag guard, it's actually the center, uh, had undisciplined, which is a pretty big thing. You know, if you're holding most of the game, you can't be a good lineman. So we'll have to pay attention to that as well. But this time it was actually a guy that was on the roster already. And we're going to end up dumping this off to Koontz as nobody was really open anything deeper than a few yards. Get most of the holding back, but it's going to be second and 11. Joe Morant over the middle on that deep in. And we're not going to get that ball off with the pressure. Deep in from Ronnie Bell. Maybe we just take Morant. He's got inside leverage and the throw is terrible. Had a chance that that ball is thrown in there, but it just as simply wasn't. It's going to be a punt. And even though I do want to see a lot, I will say there's a good chance that you see a lot of third and fourth downs on defense rather than the whole shebang. 
And a little bit of a hesitation move, and it works out perfectly as he gets all the blocks he needs for the easy first down. All right, no one has scored points yet, but they are obviously in position to do so here. We are not ready to stop this play at all. It is a third and six. A lot of manned-up linebackers on wide receivers. Takes the drag. Uh, really good hit by Mr. Wilson there, but gotta say, I really thought he was going to go inside a little bit more and didn't need to. Now, first and goal from the six. We've done okay at the goal line, but... I don't know if I'd be betting money on us over here. And that's a really good cutback. Cam Jones kind of misses him, but the DT gets him. Mr. Carl Brooks, free agent signing of ours. Is it a one-year five? I can't remember exactly what we paid him to. Safety getting out there. Cut back a little hard and a perfect play by Weatherford to stop him dead. To the sixth, start of the second quarter already. And it already looks like they're going to be putting their backups in, which, I mean, we kind of have our backups in as well. Definitely can use some depth on the D-line. And he's going to get off to run in. Really good job there by Walt James. Kind of contains the edge, and that will be a field goal. I do have to say, though, didn't really get much of a chance to see the number ones. But with all the options on this team, we do kind of need to have these guys come out here. And that is obviously a clean look. Justin Shorter injured. Might make the wide receiver starting decision a little bit easier if he's not able to go. I'm going to go with for a deep look on the verticals. Lat two. Really good throw. Lewis, perfect ball back-to-back -back times. Muscle cramps will return soon. That's A-OK. -okay. Once again, you do have to remember when uh, evaluating these players that there's going to be different talent levels. Not that the first you know string is all that great, but it's a significant drop-off on some of these positions. do like Jadarius Lewis so far, but I will say his throw power being that low for someone that can't really run is something. As there goes Miller, the rookie UDFA pickup. See, not the fastest guy in the world, but maybe this is a secret blessing in disguise as he won't run right into the outside linebacker, perhaps. And that's a lot to ask for. It's a terrible throw. We did throw it behind him because that safety was coming up, but still not the best. And there goes the draft class. Had a lot of high draft picks in this one. And I think we made use of them pretty well. Go to the play action, kind of looking for the out. Not a clean route or a route that's good at all. Beatty gains about six or seven. Actually, a pretty good job by Lewis to not throw him out of bounds. I don't really know who I want to win the quarterback battle, you know? I usually just let it play by chance. Back of the end zone, got hit as he's throwing. Good try, but uh, took a sliver too long to get that ball off, but should be a tied game. While James back on the edge, who knows? We find maybe found like a secret position for him to play. That is the one thing that does suck about preseason. It's hard to have enough players for every position. And there goes Doug Costin. Costing them a first down by getting a hand on that ball. It'll be a field goal, but not a free one by any means. Gray going to be trying to block this off the edge. Not going to get there, but it wouldn't have mattered. Perfect kick anyways. Goodson on the return. Tyler Goodson. Another former Packer. Trying to return this one. Get his name on the list. The players that get to stick around. Still going to see Jadarius Lewis out here. Definitely want to see all of the quarterback names if possible, but we'll see if that actually happens. Is that a running back inside? It's a perfect throw, but dropped by Roquan Johnson or Roshan Johnson. You know, whatever, whatever works. Yeah, we do definitely need some backup edge, though. There's no doubt about it. We'll have to find somebody. Clean route. Pretty good throw. I don't know if it's the throw power that's helping him, but Jadarius Lewis so far delivering some nice throws. Some pretty clean routes as well, but uh, in general, I like uh, I like what we're seeing so far from Jadarius. That route was so freaking bad. All right, and I'm sure this won't end up bad for him. Blocks one time, he's going to die. There's really no one open. Good swap by them, but you're going to learn that a lot playing quarterback for this team. Is There's a lot of players covered. Not much you can do about it. You just have to live with it. He's not wide open, but he's there and slightly overthrown. That will be a punt. All right, I simmed it a bunch, and we got a safety on that, apparently. So we got down the field a little bit, and the safety is here. And there is nobody open. That is a crazy throw. I don't know how he gets that away, and... How it's not grounding on top of it. Yeah, it's really hard to judge players when you have no one open. Be nice if somebody uh, broke the mold a little bit there. 
That's a really good throw. No, it's not, actually. Might just be Latu being slow. I did lead him inside, so that's probably my fault. And I think we go for this, because I just want to see. I just want to see if this is a situation where we need to get the touchdown, would we get it? You know, it's like an early game, and we're about to throw it there to Latu, but don't get it. It's an early game, two-minute drill for the winner. It's a weird one, but it's... It was my attempt there. I maybe could have just taken that streak, but I like that inside route as well and just didn't have enough time to throw it. Goodson with another chance. Another pretty uh, fast running back, obviously. And he gets blocked. Oh, gets held. Pretty nice juke move as well, or slip off to get underneath that. But that will bring us back to pretty much like the 15. 15? You wish. More like the 9-yard line. I wonder if Shorter's actually like healthy or not. Looks pretty healthy there. That's a great throw. Great catch. Slip off. Malik Cunningham, the starting quarterback now. Guy that we actually had to pay a little bit of guarantee to in free agency, but it makes sense because he's a, a very, like, athletic kind of trickery player. There's there's teams that like that. Not really open. We're going to take that throw, and it's a great throw. Great catch by Latu. Didn't really get to see too much out of Hendon Hooker, but the two quarterbacks outside of him have actually thrown a couple of nice passes. And obviously, the thing with Cunningham is he can actually run as well. And that ball is another really good one. It's just somehow the DB gets back on it. Once again, it doesn't help that we're basically starting all of our backups while they actually still have a decent bit of starters in. Inside handoff. Beatty, what a great cut. That was a hard cut for 13. Beautiful play. He's in full season form already. I'd really like to see just a lot less of him and Rodriguez. See if we need, you know, four running backs or not. And that is just a blanketed wide receiver. Nate Miller. I think he had a decent little run recently. Let's see what he can uh, come up with on second down. Using a little bit of speed. Big fella gained six. I do like Rodriguez because he is a dual style guy. So it would be nice to get another like trucking back at least. No one really opens. He's going to have to just force that in there. It's a great catch. Loses the first down. Regains it. Coverage right now is off the charts. But you know what? It's a great throw and a great catch. It will be a first down. Going with some trickery. Kind of. It's like a deep play action look, if anything. Barely going to get that ball off, but not accurately. And Tyler Beatty now injured. Be pretty cool to not have these injuries happen. And that's a really good job by the cornerback. But it still will be five as you come with a great catch. From the 26-yard line, Malik. Dump it off easily. It is a screen pass after all. Miller, not the most agile or fast guy, but finds his way for about 15. You got the slant from Shorter. And that is an open player as you come to the one. Malik Cunningham dealing. And I was going to see if his ultimate asset is going to come into play, but they're kind of on this. And it doesn't matter. Malik Cunningham in for the touchdown. Very clean drive, I must say. They want us to go for two to gain that seven-point lead. Let's see what we can do for him. Oh, there goes a wide-open booty. Do I really feel like he had a dive for that? Probably not. Drops it. And intercepted by A.J. Finley. And I got to say, if we do not start putting other guys in, we're not going to see all these quarterbacks today. And I really want to. Bajent on the play action. Not really going to see much. He's going to throw as hard as he can, and it's just going to be perfectly covered. To the outside, you got the fullback. Fullback is going to be our target. He's decently fast. Nice trucking. Does get help, though. Gains seven. Why not? See if Bajan can get himself a touchdown drive right after. Easy drag. Hits it and dropped by the rookie Myers. That is an unbelievable drop. That is so bad. That is unbelievably bad. Quick throw inside. A little behind him just to try and keep it away from the DBs. It's a great catch by Booty. Unfortunately, did drop that two-point conversion, but that's a really good makeup catch. Oh, we had him. Bajent, and we're going to throw a pick. Never got to look back up. Had our eyes on the Blitzer, who, uh, you know, made us break the tackle, and unfortunately threw it right at the DB. And that will be intercepted. Not really on Bajent. Or we're in the fourth quarter now. It is third and 11. Let's see what we got. Left the running back open. And we thought we had it covered. Didn't. Slips off the tackle. One to beat. The small man to the five. Who even is that? 
I knew it was someone small. Hardy. Deontay Hardy and company trying to get the lead back here in a very low scoring 6 to 11 matchup. Come with the all out blitz. Don't have the running back covered and completely burned by Hardy again. Touchdown Oilers. Bajan is in, and it's not a good time because they are in the zone. It's kind of hard to see what play we're even running here. And inside, perfect throw. Shorter catches it. Gets about 15 on the play. Once again, not going to really be judging him for the interception, but still. And that is a throw and a half. It is, it's a little bit down the field. We're trying to get down the field in a hurry for literally no reason at all. We can take a relaxant. They have such abilities that are broken. Bajant, not really going to be able to run, just takes the shot into the end zone. It's actually a pretty good throw as it gets out there. Very impatient trying to, like, test these players out. As Miller's gets about two or three. All right, outside, let's see what we got. They're back in the zone enough. Oh, I seen him late. Please, and nobody goes for it. Couldn't go for it with Myers, who has just played... Horrendously. Gotta admit, I, I threw it late. I did throw it late. It's unfortunate, but what can you do? And we got pushed really hard off our spot. I don't know if we're going to get the ball back for Fitzsimmons to get a chance. That's a late read again, but that is a really bad throw. Kind of a last-second throwaway type of play, though. You know, coming in when it's all squiggly and... Oh, it's just not the best. And hit as we're throwing... Kind of like Hendon Hooker, Fitzsimmons not really getting much of a chance either. Let's see if we can at least get the screen off. How about that? How about we just get the screen off? That'd be kind of cool. Beatty's out there. Clean throw. And Beatty will get the enough for the first down. Good play. Fitzsimmons does have a little bit of speed himself, so a read option is on, uh, you know, it is in the books. Can't believe freaking Nick Post is in the game, though. Uh, Nate Miller running over a guy for six. We like to see it. Got to say, there is no doubt in my mind right now that Nate Miller is at least the number three. I don't think he can dethrone Beatty. Oh, my God. What a play. Who was that that just got him? Michael Jordan. There was a, an opportunity during the draft to trade him for, for capital, and I just I remembered plays like those. And, you know, that's why I didn't get rid of him. And I'm glad that I made the right call. It's a tough throw. It's a little behind him, but short of the big man. You just got to get that in that frame. Got to say, Justin Short is impressing me here. Right now, it looks like Morant, Shorter, and then Bell as the top three. Oh, that's a really good throw. Fitzsimmons on the money. And Booty with the catch gets the touchdown. It's a beautiful play for everyone involved. What a play. Hell, in the limited time I've seen, maybe even Bell drops the number four. Yes, Booty did have that bad drop on uh, that two-point conversion. Oh, here goes the quarterback, and we don't catch him. There goes Thompson, Skyler Thompson, I believe. Uh, but he had some really good catches with a guy draped over him. Weatherford, I mean, he's good. I'd probably rather have him on him than Smoke Monday, in fairness. Wow, that was terrible by me. What a pop. Going to be a first down and a timeout, but that was pretty impressive. A lot of our original guys that are in here. Can't get off the line. Oh, we actually got through there. Carl Brooks showing something. Goes out of bounds there. Gains a yard. Two timeouts. They need the touchdown. What a preseason game this has been, though. Felt like a playoff game. That's why I meant, you know, actually mentioned it. Pretty good names in here. Double move. Try to swat it. Couldn't get the timing down and blast it over the middle. Get the press. And I thought we had a chance to jump that for the swat. Didn't get it. And I really don't think Hardy was supposed to drop that deep, but he did. All right. Can Fitzsimmons pull out a miracle? Booty, kind of his favorite guy so far. And he will have him. And wow, what a play by Thompson yet again. Playing in the box like most of the game, assuming that's him. I mean, that's a 15, 20-yard play right there. And, I mean, we have all the timeouts in the world. We just need to actually get yards. This play is a little bit shallow. And I really needed uh, that guy to get there. And, of course, it's going to be picked off. Trying to make a hero play as the clock was running out. I really needed a guy in the curl to just streak. Didn't, and we are going to lose the game by three. Not our best showing, but uh, there was definitely some notes to take back, which is that we have uh, a pretty healthy quarterback competition right now. Right now, as it follows, I would say Cunningham 1, Lewis 2, Fitzsimmons 3, and then it's a toss-up between Bajan and Hooker. 
I have to probably give it to Hooker slightly. But uh, that's how I see it right now. And then, of course, running backs. I mean, it really doesn't matter what Rodriguez does. He's the number one running back. Beatty at number two. And then Nate Miller at three. Wide receiver shorter at number two, I think, right now. With Booty at three. Bell at four. And then defense. There's not really a whole lot of competition at a lot of positions. But uh, Finney maybe making a name for himself with an interception. And then Carl Brooks, I think, holding steady at that number two DT spot. And we do have a couple of upgrades, pretty significant ones as well. I wonder, should I just put all of the quarterbacks on the the weekly training each week? And then if somebody gets star dev, luckily they get pushed to the number one guaranteed uh, to at least have that really high chance. I don't know. But uh, speaking of star plus dev, Hayes, 69 overall now. Definitely uh, on the roster, but uh, where exactly? I don't know. And then Booty. I kind of want to go release here because I think obviously – these guys are never going to be all around great players, but if we can get him at, you know, really good release, really good short route, he can be very significant in that short route game. Uh, Riley Moss, obviously a guy that we're trying to make dual uh, style for man and zone, which I think can happen. We just really, really need a dev up. And then Cam Jones, who has played very well for us. One of the highest potential players on this team uh, who has won a block shed. What's his age anyways? 24. Uh, not the fastest guy in the world, but very talented. Wonder if we get ourselves any scenarios. Any scenarios at all. Nothing. Going against the Dreadnoughts, who, once again, were runner-ups in the Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes at the quarterback spot. And in general, have a very talented roster. We're also going to be adding Nick Hampton, who's kind of a hybrid of sorts, but mainly a pass rusher, I suppose. And uh, we're going to give ourselves a little bit of uh, competition at that spot, I suppose. And uh, maybe find someone else if we can, just to have some depth. And then we we'll get ourselves a mentor, Carlos Dunlap. No one wants him on their team. I mean, if he can teach some of our guys the ropes, I'm chilling. A couple of upgrades, Mr. Ronnie Bell, a guy that's effectively, as it stands, kind of benched in a way. Uh, does fall the number three spot, but obviously he's not a bad player by any means. So even though the number three spot might be the best way to get upgrades... Number three is going to get a lot of looks from us, so if you can hold that slot spot, it might be even better than being the number two. Uh, Beatty, juke move, change of direction. We always love those kind of upgrades. Really, the change of direction, the agility, the juke move, those are really big upgrades. And then, of course, Zach Koontz, the X Factor. From normal to X Factor in one season, very raw on the route running, but sooner or later, he'll get there. All right, here's the roster. No injuries for the Dreadnoughts. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, starting quarterback. Obviously, there's a lot of good stats here. 89 deep. Seems a little low. No? 89? Below 90 for something. That's kind of crazy. J Spears, though. 85 uh, overall with okay speed, I suppose, but really good juke ability. Really good uh, receiving back stuff, but not a whole lot of speed in general on this team. Uh, wide receiver, Jordan Addison. Great. Josh Downs. Very good potential there, too, but as you can see, this team is a very undersized uh, squad for the most part, uh, but they're good. Mark Andrews, the starting tight end, is very good. Taylor Decker, very good left tackle. Tooney, very good left guard. Tipman, solid up-and-coming center. Cesar Ruiz, he's not as young as he once was, but he's a decent right guard. And then Abraham Lucas is a pretty decent right tackle. Left end, Barmore, if this is a 3-4, it makes sense. But Chase Young being on the other side makes me wonder. DT's Brazil has a good chance to be a star of the future. Maurice Hurst, Mo Hurst, 77 overall, definitely could use a replacement. Zemenez, 73 overall, would not expect him to be a starter. Asamoah, the starting middle linebacker. Greg Bullock's the number two middle linebacker. And then Greenlaw at the right outside. So is this a 3-4? Is a 4-3? I don't know what's going on. But Asante is a great corner one. Byron Murphy's a fair enough corner two. And Armin Brandt should be their number three or number two. Uh, free safety, good enough, but definitely could use a replacement. And then Amani Hooker. Some potential there. Headed in Dreadnoughts territory. But yeah, speaking of that team, it's pretty obvious that Mahomes just carries. He definitely carries that squad as it is not the best roster we've seen. There's some pretty good offensive linemen. The wide receivers aren't too bad, and they've got a really good tight end. But that defense, man, there is not a whole lot going on there. And I'm wondering if that'll lead to a better showing from our offense, giving us a better look at what this team could possibly be. But I will say it's not great that we're in week two of preseason. We still don't know who our quarterback is or even have a good idea of who it likely will be. The defense finds itself in a third and one early on in this game. Forbes, the number three cornerback, really haven't seen a lot from anyone to, to say they should jump on the lineup or drop. And that is a really close stop. 
Uh, of course, we've seen Carl Brooks cooking up quite a bit. So as of right now, him being at the number two spot makes sense. So realistically, like I said, I don't see it just yet. Wilson, the safety going up against Mark Andrews. Going to try to get out there. Does, overruns it, but Cam Jones makes the play. And D'Angelo Malone injured. Injuries are really just piling up already, and it's only preseason. Henry at that right-hand spot. We do have more depth now, so we can actually kind of afford to take injuries. Sort of. Cam Jones out there can't get there, and we're just going to let people bounce off. Henry's not going to finish the play, and that will be another big run for Tajay Spears to the 47. Luckily, not a big injury, as we were hoping it would not be. But these injuries need new strength and conditioning, Coach, because this has not been a good start. And the read option, trying to chase down as Jackson does a decent job. We actually do as a team get up behind the line of scrimmage, and once again, we're going to see it a lot. Not actually going to see it a lot. The uh, the rookies list, which I think it might have, but we canceled it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because I don't need to see it. I, I know who we drafted. Don't know what we just did there, but the throw behind him, and here's the thing we are talking about. There is your rookies, Cordell Jackson, Joe Moran. Haven't seen much of Moran, but in general, haven't seen much of the first, you know, stringers in general. So it kind of makes sense. But so far, so good. Even the tight end kind of open. Can't keep it deep. And I really need Forbes to get a hand on that ball. He doesn't even dive for it. He was in position. Massive first down. It's a pretty long drive for the Dreadnoughts, who once again have tasted the Super Bowl. Maybe going to try to taste more than just tasting. Maybe the whole damn entree. I don't know what that means. I guess we had the appetizer and we want they want the entree. I don't know. Somebody wants something for dinner. Curl routes. Pretty good coverage and can't get back in time. Can't really blame Riley Moss on that one as, well, it's a long time to throw. I don't know how you're supposed to cover that long. Bringing a lot of players up. A lot of mismatches here. We've got a lot of players coming across the field and it's just... Will we actually be able to make a play? And we're going to stop the read option. Mahomes, he's not the slowest guy in the world, but I also don't see the positives in running read options in preseason. I, I don't know. Unless they're going to run a lot of fakes this season and they want people to believe Mahomes is going to keep him more often. I don't know, but it doesn't seem like a good decision to me. And back of the end zone, Mahomes overthrows him. Mahomes pretty damn good against the rush, but still. It's hard to throw against a blitz, no matter who you are. And Andrews gets blasted by Riley Moss, stopping him down to the one. You're the wildest fake of the one-yard line ever. And it will be legit. Damari Mathis may lose this kick return job by default with the fact that, well, he's kind of playing like a pretty good cornerback. So uh, Forbes on the return is going to find himself a little bit of room, tries to cut back, can't to the 19, did what he could with what he had. And Cunningham, last week, pretty promising. Let's see what he can do against the ones. Got some crossing patterns. Apparently, Cobb is still a starter. I don't really know if I agree with that, but sure. Morant over the middle. Pretty decent throw. Kind of behind him, I will admit. A little behind him, but also didn't allow him to run into danger. Inside handoff to Rodriguez. I got the linebacker over there, but we ID him or double team the edge. Yeah, same difference, right? And there goes Rodriguez. The problem he is, great juke move inside. He's getting better and better as he gets better. That's, yep, that makes sense. 21 yards. Very successful run to the left. Maybe it's time to run the play action from the left to the right. Cunningham got a little bit of speed if he needs to get out of there. Morant wide open, and sadly Cunningham missed him. Morant's got a little bit of speed. That could have been a touchdown. Instead, we would be looking at a second and 10. A little disappointed in that. Cunningham shown a lot to us, and... Not really going to have it on that play as Morant comes open again. Talked about him not really showing much in that first game, and now he's just never covered. He's just wide open every time. Could be a throwback to Morant, speaking of, but probably going to be a run up the middle. Maybe not. Morant does actually look a little jukey. Six yards, we'll take it. But that cut move told me that he wanted to go for it, and he wanted that touchdown. Didn't happen, but maybe one day. And that is a dot! Perfect throw inside to Bell, down to the three. What a play by Cunningham. Hits that throw, but misses the other one. I don't know what to tell you. Inside handoff doesn't look open, but this slant to Bell kind of does. And he misses him. Maybe led a little bit too hard, but that is like, I mean, it's so close of a throw. It's almost like a handoff. Which, speaking of, <laughs> do they actually have Morant covered, though? Let's see. And the tight end drops it. 
don't know why the tight end moved that much. Was it not also like an option on that side as well? Still feels like he should have had that though. And maybe it's the time the speed shows up. Hit that throw. Perfect. Nobody on him. They really sold out for that run and Cunningham made it easy. Only Cunningham has a very impressive drive and then so do the Dreadnoughts on the other side. Mahomes maybe a little personal with this one as he's still in the game. Can't get out there and that is a perfect throw inside to Russell Gage and the touchdown which gets them back the lead. Or is back on the return. We kind of seen something that last return we had so let's see if we can build on it. Pretty good block by Good. Oh, Goodson to the 31. Forbes, nice little slip off on top of it. And not really open, but that is a good throw. I mean, that's on the money, right? If he's actually open, that is a completed pass. So just more of a, I don't know how he's covered and decent read, but better defensive play than anything. And I'm going to need Kuntz to get a little bit better of a block there. We gained three. Could have gained so much more. And I would like to hit a big-time throw here rather than just, like, hitting something underneath to Beatty. So let's see if we can do that. Not a big-time throw, but it's on the money and dropped by Kuntz, who had a lot of those drops last year. Those type of, like, yeah, it's not the easiest thing in the world because he is getting hit while catching it. But if you catch it, it's a, you know, drive-continued situation type plays. It's all... It's, <laughs> You know, putting that in the stat sheet every week, it's uh, it's a lot of work. Trust me. It's a long word. But yeah, eat a lot of those. You know, not the clutchest man in the world. And outside, what a hit by Cam Jones. And we get blasted. Falls down under the legs of Weatherford, though. First attempt from the 37-yard line. Going to be covering Andrews late. Actually not going to because somebody needs to get out there. Weatherford a little bit late off the jump. See if this uh, two-minute drill defense can make a play now. Nice move, and we get the pressure, but it takes a little too long. Great tackle, though, by Mathis to force a third and one. And Wilson, not bad at coverage considering we had him way off the receiver. Try to press them, and we never really got the clean look we wanted. Weatherford going against a wide receiver now. Inside route and perfectly played. By the receiver as, I mean, Riley Moss is in decent coverage. Just Mahomes put it in a really good spot. From the 10-yard line, 107 in the second. Stepping up with the safety. Covering this guy. Oh, he got the double move behind us. And that'll be a touchdown for Josh Downs. I mean, it's not really much we can do. That was a long developing play. I thought he was going to sit down on that spot. Nowhere for us to cover deep. And he just, he just double moved us. Cunningham still in. Didn't really get much of a chance to uh, finish off last drive as is... Tight end kind of made a mistake. Morant beats him. It's a dot! A little overthrown, but it's on the money for the most part. I can't tell who's been more impressive, Morant or Cunningham. Both have been pretty good. To the backup, not to the backup tight end, to the tight end. Uh, a little behind him. Try to lead him upfield, and it kind of backfired a little bit. See if he or somebody wants to make up for it. Because it's a pretty good play. He is open. Oh my god, I did not see number 57. Not a bad throw by any means, I just didn't see him. And a part of me is kind of just rooting for Cunningham now. I mean, he was probably number four. QB number four going into this thing. I think even, like, physically QB number four. He's open. It's a throw! Perfect! Bell! Touchdown! Cunningham is firmly in the number one quarterback lead. It's a beauty of a throw. Drags the feet. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at the placement. And, of course, the Dreadnoughts clock is running. They make it look easy getting on the field on us. And instead of the field goal, they're going to throw the ball? Throws it away, but that's too little too late, buddy. They'll take the three-point lead, but definitely left a little bit of points on the board there. Like I said, I don't really have a horse in the race. I mean, realistically, if we were going to start anyone, I would probably want Fitzsimmons to start the most because he's, like, the youngest. Oh, there goes... Goodson fumbling. We kind of need every possession we can get to test these guys out, just so you know, buddy. But, of course, Cunningham is going to be out. It is going to be Lewis who steps in. And Lewis gains about four. A little bit more speed. He gets a lot more than that, though. Which is as it is. That's how it goes. Speed is a massive one. I wish we would have got a new tight end, too, to be fair. I don't think Latu's bad. Nice play by Cobb and... A little bit of a miscommunication play there by Lewis and Cobb, I think. I think Lewis seen Cobb was wide open and was like, hey, go upfield. You know, you're going to get a bunch of yards there. And Cobb was like, just give me the first down. 
And inside, bad throw. What a dive by Bell. Definitely getting back on our good graces with a couple of nice touchdowns and catches. Play action. Cobb. Cobb loves that route. Gets blasted, but slips off of it to the 25. Jadarius Lewis, you know, continuing where he left off with some really nice throws. And now it's Cunningham and Lewis in the top spots. Not really going to get much out of this with Bell, I don't think, but leads him upfield to gain seven. Nice throw as well. You know, we've seen that throw from uh, Cunningham, and Morant didn't get to run upfield as much. It was pretty close, very similar, but not exactly the same. That's a lot to ask for. In behind is a perfect throw, but not the best of reads. So if that was a pick, don't blame him. It's a dot. You know, winning the game is nice and all, but testing different scenarios, you know, made-up scenarios in our head, that's also very important. You know, if I feel like, okay, that's a third and long. The underneaths aren't open. I have to hit that throw. I'm testing him out. I'm going to see if he can make that throw for us in that situation. And, he, you know, he tested. He made the throw. It's just there really wasn't much to have there. And that's back of the end zone. That's a dot dropped by Ezukanma. That is a touchdown throw on the record for Lewis. Dropped by the receiver. Unfortunate situation there. Ezukanma can have another chance at it. And holds on to this one. Dot by Lewis to throw it away from the safety. Cunningham and Lewis kind of neck and neck here. And we just sim the defense because I'm just very intrigued by this offensive battle. And that is a really bad throw by Lewis. That is going to knock him down a few notches. Cobb is open. Missed the throw. It is now Fitzsimmons' chance. Didn't really get to play as many snaps as anyone else, so uh, he's going to come in here. Quick throw to the outside. Caught by Beatty, but now third and 12. Not really going to gain you much. We are a team that likes to throw that screen pass. Azukanma is open off the rip, though. We'll see. And he is open. Fitzsimmons hits it. Azu in stride to the 20, uh, 46, anyways. Huge gainer on that one. Slam from Ezukanma looking at Bell deep. What's the exclamation point? Like he's not going to remember his route? Oh, I did not see that guy coming across. I don't know why he was in that position. That definitely threw me off a bit. I can't lie. Cobb going deep on that kind of like wheel across the field. Cobb. I did not want to be running. That is not something I can judge Fitzsimmons on. I would have loved to see us be able to throw that ball. Wanya Morris injured, opening more opportunities for Barber, who actually started the game this week. All right, it's hard to judge Fitzsimmons there because, once again, we're, we were running. Can happen to anyone. Does happen to anyone. Cobb. Oh, my. That is a really bad throw. Gets blasted. Hospital pass by Fitzsimmons. He was open on that left side. It's a throw that uh, we actually hit a touchdown on in this game. Cobb open again. Can't get the throw off. It's the thing about Cobb, man. He just, he's just open. I don't know what to tell you. He's just open. Fitzsimmons got to make a play happen here. And that's a late read by us. But more importantly, more bad blocking. Is that three men getting in on us with six blockers? Like, do we want to maybe think about what we're doing here and do a little bit better, though? I mean, some of these guys are our starting linemen. Go around. It's a late throw. Catchable, though, and dropped by Bell. All right, it's going to be pretty hard for Fitzsimmons to try and catch up in the race. But it's now Hennon Hooker's time to throw. And not going to get much time to throw either as they're going to just instantly rush us. Did take a long time to throw that. It is a little mixture of the receivers being as bad as they are and not getting open in time. We're going to go with a screen pass. Something we run a lot when we're in trouble. Out there is Nate. Can't get a block to save his life. Gains about seven or eight, though. Block and release from the wide receiver, or from the tight end and the running back. I'm sure this will go really well. And that is going to be intercepted poorly. Wow. And then to add insult to injury, Hendon Hooker gets slammed. Yeah, I got to say, Alec Lindstrom, Chris Paul, and Daniel Falele are really not playing well right now. Because we're getting a lot of pressure from that right guard spot right now. See if Belzer can do any better. Which he can, in fairness. Ran out of time, though. Nobody got open. Night and day with Belzer out there, and he's only one guy. That is... I mean, I, I like the draft pick a lot. Don't know their devs are. Maybe he's a superstar. Maybe that's why he's playing as well as he is right now. Because he's a future superstar. Inside to the tight end. Like I said, just night and day. In behind. Dropped, but... 
Hooker actually getting a chance to, to read the field a little bit. Still like Hooker a lot. A little costly, but it's a good time. Out route, nope. It's going to be to the tight end. No one else really open. Latu, not the fastest guy in the world. Gains about nine, though. That's a manageable play on third and one now. Tyler Beatty on the inside give. Inside zone for about eight as well. A little bit of a wind-up, but a great throw. Can't hold on as Cobb as these safeties are cooking. As Yukonma on the right side might be our look. Timing throw. Hooker misses him. Third and ten. Have the running back underneath, but I need something a little bit bigger than this. I guess not, and I thought he went out of bounds. I can't believe number 27 didn't jump that for the pick. Curl route, and almost caught by Ezio Kahnma. A little bit inside there, considering he's not actually at that spot. Play action wheel. And can't get the throw off. Man, the pressure. Oh, it's brutal. Nobody on the tight end, probably. I don't know why they line up like this. This is always free. Unless you miss that badly. Wow. Like, it is, like, far and away. Cunningham and, uh, maybe we have a throw here. That's a pretty good throw. Great catch by Cobb. Right now, they're the top two without a singular doubt. Fitzsimmons, I don't know, incomplete. And then Hennon Hooker, some good, some bad. Dot? Oh, it needed to be right there, too, and Cobb just doesn't see it. In between, what a dot. What's the flag? Perfect throw by Hennon, and somehow just a hold as it happens. Just throws like that that just make me like, you know, Hennon Hooker's him still. Bell, that should be free. And that is just not a lot of throw power. And he's got 90, so I don't know if that's a throw motion thing, but that felt like it should have been a touchdown, and it wasn't. And that went on the game, 42-21. to 21, Not our best showing at all. Way worse than week one. But once again, Cunningham finished with another really strong performance. Jadarius, Jadarius Lewis, really good as well. So we do have our front runners in the quarterback race, at least. And, of course, Joe Morant. What a game. Ronnie Bell, pretty good game as well. I uh, didn't see much from Shorter in that one, but yeah, I mean, there was some uh, there was some good quarterbacking from Cunningham for sure. Lewis had a little bit of sells from his teammates more than anyone. Fitzsimmons was meh. Hennon Hooker was really meh. And then we didn't have a time to uh, give Bajant a shot. Uh, and then, like we said, the receivers, Morant looked really sharp. And against one, number ones, obviously, uh, interceptions, all them. But the final game, going to have to make some cuts here. I got to be honest with you. I think Bajant's on his way out. I think we have already too many numbers at four, and he's number five. So say how you will, but uh, Rodriguez now with an 80 overall. Want to get him to 90 plus juke and spin if possible. And he gets the juke, spin, and an ability. Uh, does not have the spin move. Let's see what his ability slot is. Return man and spin cycle. Okay, spin cycle is definitely interesting. Uh... Could he even have had Jukebox? He actually can't. Jukebox is all the way at 85 elusive back. But uh, Spin Cycle is interesting. And then Carl Brooks, like I said, pretty impressive start to preseason. Uh, Going to get himself a Power Rusher upgrade. Two to Power Move, one to Strength, one to Block Shed. You can't really ask for a better upgrade than that. 77 Power Move now. And uh, our DTs are on the come up. The stock is rising. As we head on to the final preseason game, the Blues... We have a wide receiver mentorship and a camp standout. Justin Shorter is going to be uh, mentored by Randall Cobb, which I love to see. I just like the mentorship in general. Both guys have a spot on this roster, so it's nice to see that it's also names that are relevant. And then camp standout, Weatherford. Hmm. I don't know if I really like that one, to be honest. I'd rather have a pass rusher, like Malone or something, but better to have one than none, is what I always say. Weekly strategy, we'll get in through there and... Uh, have our final preseason game. We release Tyson Bajan and we incur a massive $40 million penalty, but that is okay because we are moving on no matter what. We have a couple of upgrades, but the main, you know, beef of the upgrades is Blake Freeland, who needs more power blocking, I suppose. He's kind of 70s for everything, but his pass block power is pretty bad. So if he goes against power pass rushers, he's a little bit of a, you know, of a weak spot. And then the other one is Mauga, who's just constantly on the list. Just please, just upgrade yourself. It sounded like a threat. <laughs> Why don't you go upgrade yourself? 
But for the final team, this is what the roster looks like. Justin Herbert, a really good quarterback, obviously. Looking at the running back, Joe Mixon, still very strong, very good. Kirk, solid number one. Mooney, okay, number two. Burks, okay, number three. Tight end, number one, not bad. Left tackle, very good. Left guard, decent. Center, pretty good. He's a rookie, though. Turner, definitely need a new one. Spencer Brown, not bad. Left end, Kalijah Canty could really play him, you know, either way. So I'm not really sure what kind of defense we're looking at here. But uh, 86, finesse, very solid. Right end, uh, Cameron Hayward looks kind of like a 3-4, but can't tell. Probably on his last season. Chris Jones, really good DT, so their D-line is solid. Left out, Bond, middle linebacker, Bolton. Right out, Byron Young. I don't think they even know what defense they're running. But Jalen Johnson, very solid cornerback one. Darius Williams, okay, but short cornerback two. And then Benford, high potential, but also slow cornerback three. Merrick, solid free safety with some speed and some zone and some hit power. Blackman, decent speed with zone coverage at strong safety. We're going to do one final drive with the starting defense before week one. And then call it a day. I mean, I kind of like where we're at. Good push by Jackson. Cam Jones stops him for a four-yard gain. Definitely not set up to stop the run there, but did a decent job anyways. From the 29-yard line, looked like a read option play. Runs right into Jackson. Easy stop for a loss of two. Can we get enough of a press to get the blitz in? Oh, wrong player. We're in great coverage. Oh, it's a screen. Cam Jones gets beat. Riley Moss tries to help. Blasted is mixing after throwing it out to the side. 12 yards gained. We were on the opposite side of the field fixing our mistake, sadly. We would have seen it otherwise. Safety forced to play a little bit of man coverage again. Inside, decent D. Really good hit by Weatherford, but he bounces off of that too. And Mooney gains five on a very hard-hitting attempt. Jackson standing up. Not the most athletic guy, but he's okay. There we go. Cam Jones making a play on the run. Two yards gain. Time to go with another blitz. See if we can get in there. From the 47-yard line. Might run in there with Wilson. Nope, we got a running back to cover. And there's a flag. Don't tell me that's P.I. How is everything P.I.? The timing was perfect. I don't blame Hicks one bit. I genuinely want to see where the P.I. is. Huh? Where? Like, genuinely where? I don't know how that's P.I., but sure, I guess. I guess the refs are in full swing, even preseason. Why not? Got to get ready. Got to get ready for the highest bidder at any time, you know? From the six-yard line, this has been a really long drive. Trying to swat. Oh, it was perfectly timed, and our arm placement was slightly off. That is some bull crap. From the 26, still struggling to play uh, defense a little bit. Riley Moss going to be late there. Gets blasted. Nice spin move. Slows him down, and it won't matter as Joe Mixon will do the rest. Touchdown, Blues. Tyler Beatty, who once upon a time was the starting kick returner, is going to get another chance at it to maybe take that roll back. Gets it all the way with a nice push to the 28-yard line. And now Cunningham, he just needs to play an average game, and he has the starting job going into week one. How much weight does that hold? I don't know, but as of right now... He's had a really strong performance. So let's see if he can continue that. Feels a little harsh that the momentum's this strong and an overthrow by Cunningham to a wide open Morant. Double drag, they do look like they're trying to stop this uh, this run game. Not that we even have much to stop. And that is well underthrown and picked off by Benford. I don't know how the hell Benford's even there. Was it a delay blitz and he just got there luckily? Why is he actually on that play? I'm so confused. He just reads it and jumps it super hard. I believe that to be Cunningham's first interception. Of course, not actually his fault, but still an interception if we're counting uh, legalities, counting the, you know, the fairness. Morant, 12 yards. Man, if Morant gets hurt, we're just back in a really bad spot at wide receiver. But with him out here, I feel like the world is our oyster. My man's knows how to play the wide receiver position. Let's just call it that. Let's just say what you know. we're all thinking. Rodriguez wide open and it just rifled way past him. Like I said, all Cunningham needed to do is have an average game here. And right now he is having a severely below average game. I just need him to do a little bit better. Doesn't take much to get this starting job, man. The first two games were 
were so clear cut that I mean, like I said, you just you just gotta do nothing. Just don't throw picks. Nice blocking as Rodriguez is going to cut it back for about eight. Have a team like six for ten, 90-yard game, and it's your job. But and now, now Lewis has, I mean, had an opening. And we're going to have to throw this away. Cunningham going to take the sack there. When I ran directly back, I should have threw it away right away. But Hayward being directly on Cunningham surely doesn't seem like something that should exist. And now we are ultra backwards. To be a very long screen pass, even for us. Beatty cuts it back inside. Gains about a few, but it will be a punt. All right, Cunningham's last chance. Left the door open for Lewis. I'm going to see if Lewis can steal the job. He's open. A little bit of pressure. That is a great throw, and Morant has taken it for 58. That definitely helps him a lot. Obviously, a little bit of pressure, but wide open throw. Perfect ball, touchdown. And this is realistically, like I said, become a two-quarterback race. So we are going to keep Cunningham out here for another drive. Wide open is Beatty. Gains about five on the play. Barely getting it off, though. But obviously, the numbers look a lot better right now. He missed some really big throws, but that interception we already talked about, not his fault. So we're basically acting as if that didn't exist. As Beatty will get just about the first down, maybe even debatably better to not get it. Clock not in a favorable spot, but at the same time, we are not in a favorable spot as it is third and inches, but we are going to run the ball. And they're going to give us a lot of room. I don't know where the hell the rookie Williams is going, but first down's a first down, thankfully. Play action. Not really going to get much of a block. Going to try a crazy throw. And wow, almost caught by Shorter. Had a chance. Definitely a bit overthrown, but it ended up going to Shorter, thankfully. Didn't hold on, though. And we're not going to get that off. Barely. Almost a fumble. I need the running back to wake up and be like, okay, instead of going for the fake handoff, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to block. It's all I freaking need, dude. I need something to happen. So can't believe this is, like, in the game. Can't even see my play. Not open at all. And our left guard, Terrence Williams, who had a couple of bad blocks in a row, is now injured. All right, kind of have an idea in my head what number I would be looking at for uh, somebody to steal uh, Cunningham's job. And, man, does anyone want to block? No? Okay. Why not? Screw it. Blocking's for losers anyways. Bunch of losers. Only losers block. Idiots. Morant and good try, but that ball's not inbounds. All right, when in doubt... Screen it out. It's basically been our motto for the whole regular season last year. And barely going to get that ball off. And we will get some nice blocks. Beatty! One to beat. Slips off. Stiff arm. All the way down to the 36-yard line. Making Lewis look really good on that. Great blocks. And the drive will continue. Definitely doesn't really show much for Lewis there, but he need to get the ball off. That's a start. On the run, perfect throw, great block. Bell cuts inside, down to the four-yard line. That was another nice throw. Of course, not hard either, but uh, it's okay. There's pills for that. First and goal. Morant kind of open, touchdown. Lewis had a nice drive. And so far, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, they have missed two field goals now. One blocked, one... Uh, Missed, I think. And that is a crazy play by Morant. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, this youngster. Oh, my. Please do not get injured. If he gets injured, I will cry. All my happiness will be just taken away on the spot. I should have taken the wide receiver. Slot wide receiver is open. And instead, it kind of became a force to the tight end. All right, let's see what we got. Curl route. Nope. That is a really bad route. It's a pretty good throw, but Bell just got freaking manipulated all the way down the field. Got to have a better freaking route than that, man. Third and ten, though. Let's see what we got. I don't even know what play we're supposed to be running. That's a good throw. And once again, that, that throw power is a problem, but the accuracy is making up for it. Throw power doesn't matter if you're accurate. Lewis. That's an easy drag and misses him. I know there's pressure. But that ball needs to be hit. And now Jadarius Lewis is injured. Having a pretty good, you know, drive 
after a touchdown drive, I mean, maybe given a run for the money against Cunningham. And if that's a good throw, it is not even the quarterback's fault. It is Latu's fault for being so damn slow. Oh, my. Should have just waited for, uh, I think it was Morant deep. Somebody was open. That is unbelievably bad, though. That's a tough one. Okay, I will say forced it a little bit. I don't know if I would say that was a bad throw, more of a bad read. His rib will return soon. I think that was more of a bad read. He kind of whipped it, though. The throw part is not that great for Fitzsimmons either, but I really liked that ball. That ball came out clean. And Jadarius Lewis is back out there. Uh, up by one. I don't know how they're in the momentum zone, but sure, why not? I guess this play has been so, like, miss. And that is on the money. No, it is not. Lewis misses him. Oof, big play. Big, big play. Is this actually an RPO? It says RPO, so it must be. The outside. Good throw. Cobb doesn't really handle it too well, though. Nice slip off. Gains 20. Lewis is having himself a really good drive. And, well, I mean, honestly, three drives now. That's on the money again. Dropped, sadly, though. I have no idea right now. As it stands, I don't know. If there's a really ugly throw by Lewis, I think Cunningham gets it. That wall was whipped to the moon. Didn't have the chance to set our feet. Pressure all around. Throw route for Mr. Ezukanma. And that's just really good D. Doesn't catch it. On the money, though. For the 10. Gonna punt it. Lewis is still out here. Still trying to get them throws in there. And that is just slightly overthrown. The vision to hit that throw was there. The accuracy wasn't. Dive play to Mr. Beatty. And gains about nothing. Third and 18. Cobb. Missed throw. Timing wasn't really that great. Still was making his break out there. Threw it early. Pressured. And I want to say Lewis is making necessarily bad plays, but we're not seeing anything spectacular right now. It's been a little bit of delay between the last two really good plays. Safety picked that up perfectly. Ball slightly overthrown, but for a good cause, as it would have been picked. But in the end, if that would have been a guy that was open, might have been incomplete because of a bad throw. Easy throw over the middle as your comment gets about seven. Double drag. Open. Caught by Cobb, who slips away. He's really spectacular. He really is just something else at his old age. Let me go with the play action. Still somehow in the zone. Well, I guess to be fair, they have the lead now. Latu, wide open. Perfect throw. Gets to move with it. Latu fighting forward to a 16-yard line. Gotta say, like I said, it was kind of close coming in, and Cunningham dropped the ball a little bit. And Lewis is playing damn near perfectly. As much as you can without any blocks. And then drops the ball on that one wide open. That is a wide open man for the game winner. Well, game tire at least. Play action. No one to throw to. Try to get it off and the tight end, the backup tight end just didn't go out for his route. All right. Roquan Johnson's my main look here. That's definitely something. And he is open, but overthrown and picked off. He is open there. Just overthrew him. Man, I don't know who's the who's the QB. Cunningham and Lewis were very neck and neck for the finisher. Fitzsimmons comes back in. This time for good reason rather than an injury. Open receiver misses him. I see if we can hit simple slants. We ran it four times in this game. There's not much controversy at running back, so not really much to see there. A lot of throws. Receivers and O-line probably not too happy with us. Well, there's a bye week. What are they worried about? A little bit of a wind-up on that one, I will admit, but a first down is a first down. Streak route by Mr. Bell. Not going to see much out of that, though. Timing. Oh, my God. Okay, well, it's a good thing uh, that Fitzsimmons wasn't one of the names because, man, he would have been out of this race. lot to look at here. It seems to be Cunningham versus Lewis for QB1 going into week one. I mean, we might have to look at all of the stats combined and just see how it goes. It's going to be hard to remember all of the um, you know interceptions that were legit or not, but 
you know, looking at this, averages were pretty similar. Ratings were similar. I think when you come into this game looking at like, okay, they were both similar. And we had Malik with the nod. I think Malik holds on to that quarterback spot. But at the same time, will it matter? I mean, how long does the week one starter even hold their starting job? I don't know. Uh, but Moran, I'll tell you what. Barring injury, he is the truest number one on this team without a singular shadow of a doubt. And that's with Shorter having a pretty good season last year, coming in late on the team and having a nice preseason game to start this year out as well. DeMar Mathis has an upgrade. We're going to go with the slot ability for his upgrade. He gets one to speed, which is pretty crazy, and then one to man coverage. Now putting him at 94 speed. But that is where we leave it, as we look like we're going to be playing the Black Knights. Week one at home with Malik Cunningham, I believe, as our starting quarterback. It is going to be another wild one. Do we maybe make a trade at the deadline or before for a different quarterback if things get really dire? Possibly. We still have another 11 players to release, and once we do, you'll see that starting roster in week one. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate your need support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Trump Care, second channel PK Place for non-manic content. And once again, 250 likes will have week one tomorrow. Anyways, hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video.